This is showing the three millimeter Go Direct and Mini Go Direct implants. They do come in different collar lengths. So one has a pointed end, the other has a rounded end. They both have double lead threads for faster insertion. They both have micro threads for reduced crestal bone stress. They have either a one and a half or three millimeter neck on them. The one with the rounded end is straight and then tapered, whereas the one with the pointed end is evenly tapered. The one with the rounded end just comes in three lengths and three diameters. They both come with an internal set screw that can be removed so that you can add a multi-unit or a ball abutment to it. You could add a, another GPS extender or a custom cast abutment to it. So it's a one-piece implant that can be converted into a two-piece. Now Zest came out with an implant that tries to copy this. Uh, it doesn't have the micro threads. It sticks up a millimeter higher than ours. So it doesn't have an internal thread to give the option of adding other abutments. There are two options for placing implants in narrow ridge. Either lay the flap uh, or to do the procedure flapless. So let's look at the standard flap surgery, which is what I recommend for most situations. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to flatten the ridge as necessary. This is for the three millimeter go direct implant, 13 millimeters in length. There's the 13 millimeter line on these drills. And this is a crustal bone drill uh, for very dense bone. And when you turn it in reverse, it'll flatten the top of the ridge as well. So select the 2.3 step drill. Make your initial pilot hole. This is for placing two implants. Penetrate to the full depth of the drill with the rounded go direct implant. If the bone is soft, you could stop at that point with the three millimeter. Insert the paralleling pins. Use them to uh, align the other implants, just as you're paralleling preparations in the mouth. They need to be within 10 degrees of parallelism. If they're canted out, uh, straighten them up with your next uh, drilling procedure. You're going back with a 2.8 drill in dense bone. You could use that to straighten up those sockets. The attachments will work with 10 and 10, which is 20 degrees divergence. Uh, but there may be more wear on them, so it's easier to uh, just get them parallel. So here is the Go Direct. Comes on a carrier that is a snap transfer. Just start its insertion, put the tool in, and ratchet it to its appropriate depth. You have a one and a half millimeter collar, which is usually the thickness of the soft tissue. If you need to leave it sticking up a little bit more, you could. Now flapless surgery, you need to establish whether you have available bone. So you can uh, measure the thickness of the tissue and then you can map the bone with probes or better yet, do a CT scan and determine whether you have available bone or not. Much more difficult procedure to do this than laying a flap. Do your tissue punches. Start with a, a locator pointed drill.
So there's your locator pointed drill. For expediency, cut all three uh, initial pilot holes. Select the 2.3 drill that steps down to 2. In relatively soft bone with the pointed implant, you can stop and the implant point will work its way through the bone because of the sharp end. If the bone is dense, then go ahead and finish the site to the full depth. If you attempt to place a pointed implant in dense bone that's only been prepared half the depth, there's a chance of fracture. Put the paralleling pin in and then repeat the procedure to help you line it up. That's how you work your way around the arch. I recommend using three of these implants in the edentulous jaw. The middle one will give you what is called indirect retention. And again, try and get them within 10 degrees of uh, alignment. If they're off, then it'd be a good idea to straighten them out with your next drill. In the case of the pointed ones, if you've only penetrated halfway, you could use the same 2.3 drill and just finish the depth of the preparation as you realign the implant. Take the tag off of the implant, put it onto your patient record. This is a 3.0 millimeter mini implant, mini go direct implant. There's a snap comfort cap also packaged with that. Just turn it with finger pressure and then ratchet it to place. Now, if the torque seems to be getting too high, and, and I recommend using torque ratchets, uh, above 70 to 80 newton centimeters, stop and back the implant out, and then penetrate to the full depth with the drill. If you determined the, the density of the bone properly to begin with, you wouldn't need to do this. You would know whether it's dense and you would have taken care of that at the beginning. Uh, if you've now find out though that it is too dense to get it fully seated, then come back with the 2.8 drill and might as well penetrate to the full depth of the drill to the 13 millimeter line. There's the three of them. The anterior one will provide indirect retention when the denture tries to pick up in the back as the patient's chewing. Snap on the comfort caps. Deliver the patient's existing denture with a soft liner. You see there are two neck lengths, 1.5 and 3 millimeters. That's 13. This would be to the 14 and a half, which is halfway between 13 and 16. And this one and a half millimeters must stick above the soft tissue for the attachment to snap on. Now you're ready to take your impression. Snap on the uh, transfer that comes with the implant. If you want to cut it off to make it shorter, you can.
Snap on your comfort caps. Now you put uh, the abutment analog in the transfers. Pour the working cast. Here's the attachments. They come with a, a black processing insert and liners with different degrees of retention. This shows the internal attachment, better retention than the zest, anodized pink, a space in here for this ball to move up and down. This is the internal liner. It's recommended in a lower edentulous jaw with two to three implants. Here's the external one, which is what we use on bar overdentures now where we're sure to get these parallel and where we don't need vertical stress breaking. It will rotate. So we've got the uh, external and we have the internal. Attachments usually come with the five pound retentive one. And you can see how this moves out of the way and allows the ball to move up and down. and rotate. Metal housing and the black insert and the spacer are used for either a chair pickup in a reline or in this case we're going to manufacture a base plate stabilized base plate to take the bite registrations mount the working cast on an articulator, set the teeth up for a wax try-in, come back and uh, check the aesthetics and occlusion of that denture base. Process the uh, denture and then you can remove the black insert and uh, pop in the final one. Check the occlusion. You can also do this chair side using the patient's existing denture. Great space for the attachments. Put some cold cure acrylic on the top, seat the denture, and allow it to cure. You then replace the black insert with the nylon one as a special tool for doing that. And that's how we do overdentures.